Greetings in the name of our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is sanctifyingtruth.org with Evangelist Mike Brown. This will be episode 42, April 6, 2019. I could have never dreamed that I would have done one episode, much less episode 42. And we give God the praise, glory, and honor for it. And I hope his saints are edified through this. I want to welcome all of you, my listeners. But let me say this, this podcast is not about me. It's about my Lord Jesus Christ. And as I said in the last episode, that in all things, including this, he might have the preeminence, Colossians 1.18. That is our desire, that is our goal, is to point you toward him. And let me say this, my friend, this podcast is no substitute for you physically going to your local church, nor is any ministry, radio, TV, wherever how you get it. You must take your body to the local church on the Lord's day. That's the commandment of God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Some have bad manners, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day, the day of Christ approaching. And my friend, perhaps today, perhaps he would come today and receive us unto himself. What a glorious day that will be. And my friend, according to the all the prophecies of the word of God of the last days, we're right there at the door listening for the shout, for the voice of the archangel and for the trump of God. And we're going to be caught up together with the in the clouds with the dead in Christ to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord, never to be parted again from his side. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. All we have and all we need are the words of the living God. My friend, we don't need no extra biblical revelation. We don't know we need we don't need any apparition. We don't need no revelation other than what's given in the words of the living God. It's all you need. This side of eternity. And my friend the Lord, when we get to heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ will have all eternity to explain what we could not understand in this physical body. And uh, Isaiah says, They that murmur in the millennium shall learn doctrine. Now, we're not physically able to go to our street preaching post this morning, so we're going to try to glorify our Lord Jesus Christ through this venue that our Lord has afforded us, and we thank Him for it. I hope that if you have friends and relatives that need the Lord, you will encourage them to listen in on our podcast, and maybe this will help them to get right with God and get to a local Bible-believing church tomorrow. The Word of God is able to do what we cannot. It holds all the power to change lives. It changed mine, and if you're saved by the grace of God, it changed yours. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, no longer in Adam, but placed in Christ's body, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's the acid test of a new creature. Is there a time in your life, listener, when that took place? Paul said in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourselves. Do a self-examination 
Be honest with yourself, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick, it's living, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow. There's the tripartite being of the man, made in the image of God, body, soul, and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4, 13. Do you see the personality of the Word of God? Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in His sight, the Word of God's sight. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. John chapter 1. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of Him, the Word of God, with whom we have to do, will answer to God for our lives. He is the judge of all the earth, and he will do right by you, my friend. You live for him, he'll give you a reward. You live after your flesh, you'll lose all your rewards, and you'll be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ. If you don't get saved by the grace of God, my friend, you'll hear, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels at the great white throne judgment. Now our Lord told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Since I cannot go physically, The Lord has allowed this open door to send the gospel out on the world wide web to the ends of the earth. Anywhere there's a signal, my friend, God's word can go. Now, in our last podcast, we were looking at what scripture has to say about the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, on this episode, we will see what the work of the Christian is who is filled with the Spirit. The Apostle Paul commanded in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. And when you're filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 19, 5, 19 says, speaking unto yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. He will be on your heart and mind, not just on the Lord's day, but every weekday. Every day is the Lord's day for the child of God. So therefore, My friend, it is only natural that the believer who is full of the Spirit and led by the Spirit should glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. We looked at John chapter 16 in our last episode 41, and we saw that the Spirit's duty was to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. He shall not speak of himself, Jesus Christ said, but he shall glorify me. And my friend, if you are full of the Spirit of God, you are not promoting yourself, your ministry, what you have done. You're not speaking of yourself. You are speaking of him. You're talking about how wonderful your wonderful Savior is. 
and my friend, you are nothing. He's everything, and we are nothing. But nothing, a zero, my friend, with the one in front of it. He's number one, right? That can make you a 10. If he's number one, he has the preeminence in your life, and you're a zero, you know that you're nothing, then guess what? You can go to the top of the scale with him, number 10, if he is ruling and reigning from your heart. But that's the only way. And then you're still nothing, and he is everything. Because he has done everything. He has delivered us from so great a death, cleansed us and forgiven us of all past sins and transgressions and iniquities, all under his precious blood. Psalm 50, 14, Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. My friend, after God has delivered you, you give him praise, glory, and honor unto others in the church and you tell them what they have what god has done for you psalm 50 verse 16 but unto the wicked god saith what hast thou to do to declare my statutes or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth in other words shut up psalm 86 and verse 7 through 13, in the day of my trouble, David says, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Are you in trouble today, saint? Are you in trouble today, sinner? If, you not, if you're not, you will be soon, and you'll need God to intervene for you. The all-powerful God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name, not the name of Allah, not the name of Mary, not the name of the Pope, the false prophet, not the name of Confucius, Buddha, Mohammed, none of the false gods, but the true and living God. The Lord is his name. For thou art great, and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. There's a usurper God ruling this present evil world. But one day, my friend, Revelation chapter 20, he is going to be cast, he's going to be bound with a great chain and cast into the bottomless pit. And at the end of the millennial reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will be cast into the lake of fire where he will be punished forever and ever. Amen. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, friend. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Psalm eighty six twelve I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name for evermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Have you been delivered, my friend, from the lowest hell? Do you not realize that's what you deserved? If you thought you was a pretty good person when God saved you, you might ought to check up and make sure that you're really saved. Because 
every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Were it not for his saving grace, we'd all be consigned to the lake of fire. <clears throat> Romans 15, verse 5, Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to Jesus, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore receive you one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. My friend, he gets all the praise, glory, and honor, and majesty. It's all pointed to him. He deserves it all. And throughout all eternity, he will receive it. Romans chapter 15 and verse 8. We see, my friend, that the Lord Jesus Christ is not just the hope of the Jews, but also of the Gentiles. We get in the body of Christ because of their, the Jews' unbelief. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision, that's the Jews, Israel, for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for His mercy. As He had mercy on you, then glorify God on that behalf. As it is written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. 1 Corinthians sixteen eighteen. Now get it, my friend. Get it down. Get the Word of God. Read it and weep before God. Flee fornication. Now, my friend, you can look it up in the words of, the, of a dictionary, and you'll see fornication is any sexual activity outside of the bounds of holy matrimony. Any of it. Listen. Flee fornication. Do like Joseph did. Run out of your coat. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. In other words, you are going to reap fornication in your physical body. It won't just be a reaping in your heart and sorrow of your heart. Oh no, my friend, God is going to touch your body and he's going to let you know why you are reaping in your body. So what you ought to do is get right with God today. Confess that sin of wickedness, come clean with God, and my friend, immediately stop it. Verse Corinthians six nineteen. What know ye not that your body, the body of the believer, now is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? He's in your spirit. If you're a believer which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. You do not have the right to take your body and sin against the Holy Ghost with it. Every sin, my friend, that you commit as a believer, you are taking God the Holy Ghost in with it. He is in your heart. You are sealed by Him until the day of the redemption of your body. That ought to strike fear in your heart. 1 Corinthians 6.20 For ye are bought 
with a price. That's the precious blood of Christ shed on Calvary's cross for our wicked sins. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You are God's possession, and we are to glorify God with our body and with our spirit. If God the Holy Spirit is in your spirit, my friend, he will come out occasionally through your body. It will be made known that you're a child of God. But if you never live for God, if you never obey his words, if you never witness for God, the fact of the matter is, is he is not in you. You are not his possession. You might as well go ahead and admit that to yourself. Come clean with God and pray the sinner's prayer. Say, God, be merciful unto me, a hell-deserving sinner. Lord, I'm a, I'm a self-deceived sinner. And that's the reason I can't get the victory over my wicked flesh. And I'm at the end of myself. I'm going to tell you something, sinner friend. You'll get the audience of God. You will get his ears. He will perk up at that prayer. 1 Peter 4.12 Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, child of God, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Don't let the devil tell you, hey, if you are a child of God, this fiery trial wouldn't be happening to you. Don't God love you? God don't treat his children like this. No, my friend, God is trying you. He's making, sun, he's making gold out of a lump of coal through your fiery trials. But rejoice, Peter says, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, that's second advent, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. I'm going to tell you something. If you've got one of those five crowns of the New Testament to cast at his feet, you can have exceeding joy when he rules and reigns on this earth. And when he puts on his crown, when that crown of thorns turns into many crowns, and the King of kings and Lord of lords takes over his rightful reign over this earth. You may be glad also with exceeding joy. 1 Peter 4, 14, If you be reproached for the name of Christ, Christian, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you, the Spirit of God, my friend. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Listen, when the world mocks you, and laughs at you, and gives you the middle finger, curses you, my friend, take heart. Jesus Christ is being glorified. When the Stephen was being stoned to death, old Saul was holding the coats of those who stoned him. And my friend, it was at that point, Stephen prayed to God, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Who but a child of God could pray that prayer? And he committed his spirit into God's hands. And Saul heard that prayer. And the spirit of God smote his heart. And my friend, in a few days, he was gloriously saved on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9 and became Paul. The persecutor 
my friend, became the preacher. 1 Peter 4.15, But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief. Now you may say, well, I don't know if you killed anybody. But the Bible says if you hate your brother, you are, are a murderer at heart. Or as a thief. Or as an evildoer. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. In other words, leave it alone. You've got enough to take care of in your own life. You and the Lord Jesus Christ and your relationship with Him should be first. That's what we need to work on. First Peter 4, 16, Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, now get it, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Amen and amen. First Peter, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him, in Christ, before the foundation of the world, that is, God is omniscient, he knew the day, the hour, and the second that we would receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, in the mind of God, who was slain before the foundation of the world, we were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. My friend, we are predestinated to be glorified, to be adopted into bodily into the family of God, Romans chapter 8. Calvinism had the stinking tulip doctrine of Calvinism has no part of the Word of God. We're not talking about Calvinism here. The Lord Jesus Christ shed his life's blood for every man, woman, boy, and girl that comes into the world. You are the elect of God if you run for office by falling on your face and confessing to God that you're a hell-deserving sinner and that Jesus Christ is Lord and you receive him as Savior, then, my friend, you are elected by God. And notice the Bible says in Ephesians 1, 5, having a verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. We were unacceptable in Adam. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Spiritual life comes through the last Adam, not the second Adam. There is no second Adam. The Lord Jesus Christ is the last Adam. Adam, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we are accepted in him, the beloved. When our Lord Jesus Christ was baptized by John the Baptist, there was a voice spake from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And then my friend, when he came up, out of the water. He wasn't sprinkled. He was completely bodily immersed at Enon in the waters of Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, the, the Spirit of God descended upon him in the form of a dove. Now that is a picture, the first picture you see in the New Testament of the Holy 
Trinity. The Father speaking out of heaven, the Son being baptized, and the Spirit of God resting upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and he begins his public ministry. And the Bible says here in verse number 7, in whom, in the beloved, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. God said in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 13, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. When God saw the blood applied to the doorpost and the lentils of the nation of Israel, the Hebrews' houses, my friend, the destroyer passed over them. When God the Holy Ghost sees the blood applied to your heart, my friend, the wrath of God will pass over over you and we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins colossians 1:14 says even the forgiveness of sins so therefore rome didn't like that rome took that out of their bibles they omitted the precious blood of christ the only way you'll get to heaven is through the blood Amen. Thank God for the precious blood of Christ. Revelation 1, 5, in whom he, he loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Sinner friend, you need a blood bath. You don't need re religion. You don't need to join the church. You don't need to be baptized in water. You don't need to say any kind of penance or confess your sin to another sinner. You need to be washed in the blood. That's what you need. And that washing comes when you fall on your face sincerely and humbly before your Maker, the Lord Jesus Christ, and you receive Him as Savior then he washes you from your sins in his own blood, and he'll make you white as snow. And there the Bible says in verse 8, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed, in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one, the body of Christ, Jew and Gentile, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, that's a Heavenly inheritance, that's our home in heaven, New Jerusalem, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. My friend, the only way you can get in Christ, out of Adam, you were born physically in Adam, and the only way you can get into Christ and become a member of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones, Ephesians 5.30, is by trusting in him. Ephesians chapter uh, 4 the Bible says, uh, in whom we have redemption, the Bible says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. My friend, we are in him 
by faith. Ephesians 1, 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. In verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, that after ye heard the word of truth, this is the process, after that ye heard the word of truth. The word of truth is the King James Bible of 1611. Romans 10, 17. So then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Paul says, after that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, that is Christ died for your sins, he was buried, and that he rose again from the dead, bodily three days after his death that's the gospel of your salvation the death burial and glorious bodily resurrection in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that holy spirit of promise Amen. There, there's the process, my friend. You trusted after you heard the word of truth, after you heard the word of God preached to you, then you believed it, and then you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 5.30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are sealed unto the day of of redemption, and that of our body. My friend, if you're a child of God and you've been sealed by the Spirit of God, you can forget the devil breaking through that seal and you losing your salvation. It's not happening, not possible. For salvation is of the Lord. Ask Jonah about it, what he thinks about it after he went through the whale's belly for three days and three nights. When he got out of it, my friend, in Jonah chapter 2, he agreed, salvation is of the Lord. From Genesis to Revelation, salvation is of the Lord is taught. My friend, all we do is receive him our great salvation, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now that one last verse there in verse number 14, which is the earnest, he is the down payment, the Holy Spirit of God. He, my friend, lets us know that the best is yet to come in heaven. When we leave this vile body and we're fashioned like unto his glorious body and we receive our inheritance in heaven, which is the earnest, the Holy Spirit of God, which is the earnest. Do you have the earnest in your heart? Do you have the down payment in your heart, my friend? If you do, you know you do. If you don't, quit lying to yourself and come clean with God today. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory, not ours. My friend, the Holy Spirit of God lets us know that our inheritance is secured. And one day, my friend, he's going to change our vile body and fashion it like unto his glorious body. And we are going to inhabit New Jerusalem of Revelation chapter 21. And we bless our Lord's holy name for this. So Paul says in Ephesians 1.15, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus 
and love unto all the saints. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his, in, his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet. That includes Satan, the devil, and all of his minions. And gave him, Christ, to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, his inorganic body. His physical body is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us at this very moment. But His inorganic body, the universal church, is still here on this earth. The church, which is His body, not talking about the local material church, but his inorganic body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now get Revelation 15, 3. And they sing the song of Moses. This is in heaven. This is in heaven. The servant of God and the song of the Lamb saying, Great. And marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, and that in the millennial age the golden age, the thousand-year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ when he rules from David's throne after the great tribulation. And my friend, if you live for him during your life in this church age, you will rule and reign with him as kings and priests in the kingdom of heaven that is to come and be set up at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ at the end of great tribulation. My friend, then our Lord will take his rightful place on the throne of David, and he will rule over his enemies, and the church will rule with him. Now that last phrase in Revelation 15, 4 says, for thy judgments are made manifest. My friend, are you prepared for his appearing today? Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? Have you passed from death unto life in your heart? Can you put your finger on a time and place when you called upon him and he delivered you from the wrath to come on your sins. And my friend, are you living for him today? Will you be in the Lord's house tomorrow in a Bible preaching church? If you will not, you're not right with God. And my friend, I'm praying 
that this message smites your heart and you come clean with God today. Get out on your prayer bones today, on your face before God, and come clean with Him. Receive Him as your Lord and Savior. My friend, if you're out of the way, confess your sins to Him. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 13, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And child of God, don't forget 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, thank you for listening. I hope you have a blessed day. Good day.